take the Bible showing to John chapter 10. And uh, you know, we had struggled, you know, in this life, same as it was before. Sometimes we struggle with knowing who to follow, who's teaching the truth and who's speaking the truth and who we need to follow in our lives and follow our, law, our lives after. So, uh, and in this section of scripture that, that we're in now as, as Jesus we know, we know that we learned last week that he is the door today we're going to look at how he is the good shepherd and this is in contrast the good shepherd is in contrast against some other shepherds which were Pharisees and scribes and they were not real shepherds is what Jesus is telling them now and as you read down through here and as you study John for yourself you're going to you're going to realize that with me, but there's a, a great contrast that Jesus is teaching right here between the good shepherd, the shepherd of the sheep, and some false shepherds that went for different reasons. So if you're there, if you're there with me in John chapter 10, we're going to be looking at verses 10 through 18. So if you would, if you please stand while we read, if you're able to, and if you're not, you can follow along right there. Uh, in your seat, but we're going to start with, with verse 10 of John chapter 10. It says, The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives us life for his sheep, but he that is a hireling and not the truth or not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf, wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and flee. And the wolf catches them, scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and care not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so knoweth I the Father. And lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me. Because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment I receive from my Father. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this night, for this time of fellowship we have. Thank you for drawing us here together in courage. Strengthen our hearts. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. So as we begin, you know, tonight, as I said earlier, oftentimes in our lives, we have a hard time understanding who to trust, who to follow. We've all been deceived before by some folks, haven't we? They may have set out to hurt us. Some of them, we may have been deceived by them, and they didn't intend to hurt us. They, they were just deceived themselves. But one of the tests of a leader is, is that they know the truth. And when we're looking in this scripture now, in this case that we're looking at, in these scriptures, that we may know the true shepherd, the good shepherd. And the ideas that we're going to be talking about in, in, in this passage is, who is the real leader? Who is the real leaders? Who are our leaders? And are they following the one true leader? The Pharisees said this, that they were the real leaders. But Jesus says, I'm the real leader. The Pharisees would say, we have the way to eternal life. And Jesus says, I am the way to eternal life. Amen. The Pharisees would say that they were the shepherds of Israel. But now Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. As we are going through these I am statements, as we get to this one here, Ego of me is a good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. So why should we trust that Jesus is the good shepherd? 
To know who the good shepherd is, we're going to look at just three different qualities that, that we're going to see in the good shepherd. And to know the good shepherd, and we're going to look at this, these three things. We're going to look at the shepherd's ministry. We're going to look at the shepherd's mindset. And we're going to look at the shepherd's mission. So as, as we get into these verses, you just think how these fit in there. And think how we're being led when we follow the word of God, when we follow Jesus Christ, when we're his disciples. How we, who we are following and how we are leading in our ministry. In each of our ministries. In my ministry, in your ministry, in my mindset, in your mindset, in my mission and in your mission. How, you know, are we leading and how are we doing? Are we the, these leaders that God desires us to be? So let's look at this, this first one that we're, we're looking at, the ministry of the good shepherd. So in, look at verse 10 to start with. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and destroy. And I'm coming that you may have, have life. So, so, you know, one, one of the ideas we have behind Jesus' mission, he came to give us life. Didn't he? And life, that's talking about eternal life right there. He is the door. He opens. It's only through him that we can obtain eternal life. And as pastor explained to us last week, he, as him being the door, it's got to be through him and him alone. Amen. You know, the Pharisees talk, well, it's through Abraham. You've got to be born right. You do this. You, you do that. But Jesus says, no. He says, I am the door. I came that you may have life and have it more abundant. And then in, in verse 11, he says, I am the good. Shepherd, the good shepherd, give his life for his sheep. This is what we're seeing in his ministry right here. As the Pharisees thought that it was all about them. He tells them that they didn't know the truth. And because they do not know the truth, they were not true shepherds. Because all true shepherds would come by Jesus. For he is their good shepherd. Pharisees were not. You can go back in John chapter 9, verses 39 and 40, and read where the Pharisees asked him, Are we blind? And while they're saying, Are we blind to eternal life? Are we blind to the scripture? Are we blind to the followers? Jesus says, Yeah, you're blind. You don't know. And you're accepting that you're not following me. So the Pharisees, when Jesus was teaching them, when they were talking to him, they knew spiritual things. But some think, that they are leaders. But when we get down to analyzing what they're teaching, that some of their teachings are against the truth of the Word of God, then it's time to begin to ask questions. It? It's time to begin to know, I, now who am I following? Who is this person? Who is this man? Who is this woman that I'm following? A good leader, listen, will always be living out what they believe. A leader, a true leader, a good leader will always live out what they teach. They're followers. And when we say we're followers of Jesus Christ, we teach what Jesus taught and we live what Jesus lived. And we, we do it. We just do it. That's who we are. And the Pharisees, they were not welcoming to Jesus. They were watching what he was saying. They were watching what he was doing. And they hated him. Why did they hate him so bad? Because what he spoke was truth and what he lived was true. And a false leader hates those that know the truth and live it. A false leader will hate those that love the truth, that teach the truth, and also live it. Now it takes a twofold thing here to got to know it and we got to live it. So Jesus. That's why he's coming up to this section right here. He says, I am the good shepherd. So that throws a great contrast in there. And it should take their minds to, to a shepherd. Sometimes my mind doesn't always go back to that way. I've never seen a shepherd that I realize. But if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 23. Psalm chapter 23. Y'all know that one? Y'all probably know that one by heart. Yeah. Psalm 23, we're going to look at just a few things. And we're not going to go through this completely, but we're just going to pull some ideas out of here, some thoughts. Psalm 23. It says the Lord, David, David writing this, he says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. You know, a couple of things about this shepherd that we see right now is uh, sheep have somebody watching over them. Amen, brother. They always have somebody watching over them, and they know who's watching over them. They know who it is. Look there. And they don't want. They have want for nothing. Why? Because the shepherd provides. That's what a shepherd does. He takes care of his sheep. He provides for them. He goes ahead of them. The sheep have no wants. And they live in safe places. Look, he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is who that shepherd is. He, lit, he knows where to take them. He knows how to get them there. And he knows how to keep them when they are there. Because the shepherd does this. Look at verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. We get into some hard situations in life. There's a lot of times we're walking in shadows. And sometimes it seems like we won't get out of them. So one of the great things about a good shepherd is he never left his sheep. Amen. He does not leave us. No matter those hard times we walk through, no matter those shadows that we, we get into, Amen. those shadows are scary. Amen. Those shadows may send us into despair. But he says, the Bible says, he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. We don't have to fear any evil. For he is with us. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And that's for protection. The rod and staff are used for protection. They're, they have comfort. The sheep have comfort knowing what the good shepherd has. They have comfort. They have protection. And when, when they know they have these things, you know what they do? They just follow they just follow. They know that good shepherd. Look at verse 5. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It sounds like David there as he wrote that. He didn't have a whole bunch to worry about because his, the Father in heaven was taken care of. He was being provided for, even out, even out there in the wilderness, even out there in the woods, we might say. Or, you know, down here, it might be, might be out there in the swamp with all the moccasins and the gators, all those things that come to get us. He's right there for us. He's right there with us. These were just a few things. You know, you go back and you read through Psalm 23, and you can find more things out in there that Jesus, that the good shepherd, will do. So back to John chapter 10. The shepherd's life. The shepherd's life is given for the sheep. The shepherd's life is given for the sheep. And, you know, he's ready to lay down his life, but, you know, he, the shepherd didn't have a life of ease. He wasn't kicked back in the house with the fan on. He was out there with the sheep. Where were the sheep? They were underneath the sun deep down. They were, he, was, he was with the sheep out there in the thunderstorms. He was with the sheep at night in the sheepfold. He was, he was with his sheep whenever it was raining, cold, snowing, no matter if they were on the mountaintop or down in the valley. The shepherd was with his sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the, the good shepherd. Matter of fact, it says the twice in there. Jesus is that good shepherd that is greater than any shepherd they had known before. That's in contrast against the Pharisees. You know, they call themselves shepherds. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I give my life for my sheep. You know what? Jesus was always with those sheep. He was always with the people, wasn't he? You know what? Many times he was alone. What? Many times he was by himself. Was always out there with the sheep. And as you read through the Gospels, if you go back and you read through the Gospel of John, you'll see how much time he spent with people. This is what, what he did. What, what makes him the good shepherd? Why can we trust him? Why can we follow him? Because he takes care of his people. This is what you'll find as you read through, through the Gospel of John. 
He, Jesus was always healing people. He was always casting out demons, wasn't he? He was causing the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. He was, he was causing all those, some, some folks even raised from the dead. He was always ministering to all that would come to him. He didn't call out anybody. It wasn't just Jews, it wasn't just Gentiles, it was Jews and Gentiles. It was anybody that would come to Jesus. Because we know Jesus is our good shepherd. He ministered to all that would come to him. And he rarely had a free moment. So how could somebody do this? You picture a shepherd out there shepherding his flock. Anything could scatter them. Anything could run in the middle of them and, and they would just scatter out. Maybe run off the edge of cliffs or fall in ditches and he'd have to go find them again. How could anybody give 24-7 to the sheep? You know, there's some of us, sometimes we feel like we give 24-7 to our children, don't we? As Brother Greg was, was, was teaching about the door last week, I was like, man, when does that guy rest? I hope them sheep was quiet when they came up in that cave. And then don't you know with the shepherd at the door? All the sounds that go on at night time. If you heard old old wolf howling off, don't you know his ears perked up and his eyes open? Yeah. He didn't have much time to sleep. And how many of us love to sleep out in the day, in the sun, when it's, I don't know, 100 degrees? It just don't happen good, does it? He was all, so how does a person do that? See, yes, somebody that's going to spend as much time with sheep, with his people as Jesus does, He's got to have the right mindset. Amen. So the right mindset, the mindset of the good shepherd is this. It, it, it was different from all the other shepherds around him in that day, from all the other Pharisees. The Pharisees were more like, you come to me. But Jesus went to them. Jesus spent time with them so much that the crowds were just wanting to come around him. The, the Pharisees, uh, as they were shepherds, or the ones that were just leading the service in the temples, that's who they thought were the shepherds. And they thought they were great men of God. They were not a great shepherd. Now, all that come before Jesus, all the scribes and Pharisees, there were some of them probably good people. There were some of them good, honest, and knew the Lord. Some of them, but the ones that were running things in Jesus' day in the temple, taking care of all that, they were corrupt. Most of them were corrupt. The shepherds of Israel, they were not real shepherds. Spiritual leaders, listen, cannot lead if they don't know the Father in heaven. And they, they cannot they cannot lead people when they don't know the owner of the people. And they don't know the they don't know the father if they don't know his son. Our mindset helps us to minister. Look with me at verse 12. But he is a hire. And not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not. Seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep, fleeth, and the wolf catches them, scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he's a hireling and careth not for the sheep. Jesus Christ says, I am the good shepherd. When a hired man's life is threatened, he's going to run. When a hired man's life is threatened, he's going to run. What do you mean? Because he may be in it. Maybe these guys were in it. The, the other scribes and the Pharisees, the false, you know, the false shepherds, maybe they were in it for the money. Maybe they were in it for because everybody looked to them. Maybe they were in it just they got to do the services and keep up with the services. But false leaders or false shepherds will lead the sheep when they see trouble coming. They will lead the sheep. When they see hard times coming. That hired person, he ain't in it, he ain't gonna give his life for several reasons. A few of them is this. He ain't gonna give his life if he don't love the sheep. He ain't gonna give his life if he don't know the owner of the sheep. He ain't gonna give his life if he don't care for those that the owner cares for. And Jesus, as he's talking right here, he says, some of you guys here. Y'all, I'm the good shepherd, but y'all are just like somebody that's hired out. You're maybe no, no more than a day laborer. Because this is what's going to happen. This is what you have done. 
You have seen some wolves coming, and you've left the sheep. You have run to save your own life, not caring they couldn't defend themselves, not caring you didn't have them in a great place, not caring anything about the sheep. The wolf has caught them and scattered them. I guess when we look at this, we can say Jesus is telling those scribes and Pharisees, look here, there's a lot of, a lot of people that you've scattered. Allowed to be scattered with your teachings. You've laid a bunch of burdens, a bunch of rules on people that don't apply to getting to knowing God. You've made it so hard for somebody to have their sins forgiven that they're walking around burdened down and heavy laden. Well, as you remember, Jesus said this, come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is a painful thing when we see a person that has been deceived and left and given over to the enemy. It's painful to see the damage that's taking place. That when not a real shepherd in sight. There's nobody in sight to help people when they're hurting. To bind up sheep when, when they've been, been caught or, or captured. To pull them back into the flock when they've been scattered. To lead them to a green pasture. A place where they can learn and grow and have safety and comfort. And, and clear water to drink. When they can get filled that they thirst no more. It's painful to see when we know people are led away from these things. It's just like a heart. Jesus says, I am not like that hireling. Jesus is concerned about the sheep. Look at verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. And I am known by mine. So Jesus knows his sheep. And his know him. So how does that take place? How do they know each other? Had to spend time with each other, didn't they? Had to spend time with each other. How much, as Jesus, as we read through the Gospels, how much time did Jesus spend? How much time did he give? I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father and lay down my life for the sheep. He says, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold in verse 16, them also I want to bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. When the shepherd calls, they know his voice. And I'm sure sometimes he calls and calls and calls until we follow, until we get to know the truth, until we get to understand the truth. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as God, as Jesus, the good shepherd, keeps calling and calling and calling and keeps helping us to see the things that he does and to know the truth that he teaches, we get to know the Father. Through the Son, the Good Shepherd. In verse 14, Jesus knows he is, and his know, knows who he is. Jesus has an intimate relationship with the sheep, just like the one he has with his Father in heaven. He knows everything about his Father in heaven, doesn't he? He knows everything about the sheep, too, about his people, about those. Those following him and serving him. He knows us. He knows you. He has, Jesus has an intimate relationship with the sheep. In John 6, 10, Jesus has a group of people following him. He's out there in the wilderness, a big group of people following him. Some say maybe 20, 25,000 people, something like that. I thought it was pretty good when, when, I, when I read this, when I, when I thought about it. He was right there. He was going to feed them. He had been teaching them all day. He was going to sit down. They were fixing to have a meal. Out there in the middle of nowhere. Out there in the wilderness, you might say. He took care of his sheep, didn't he? He said, how are we going to feed them? We're going to go into a city and buy? Jesus says, just sit, just sit down, boys. This is buddy. This ain't, this ain't Bible. It's just 
my interpretation of what Jesus said. Sit down, boys. Let me show you something. Let, let me show you about a shepherd and his sheep. And he fed all of them. The good shepherds know how to feed the sheep. He knows where to get them. This is the interesting part, I thought. In, in uh, verse 10 right there, it says that Jesus told them, you know, make them sit down. Make them sit down and group in bunches of 50 or 100. And then, then John says this. He says, and there was green grass. There was grass everywhere. That's just not a coincidence. Well, I was wondering if he was leading up the good shepherd. He could have let them out there. There could have been rocks or dirt or sand or whatever, but where he was, it was out there on a plateau. It was out there on a, on a hill, and there was plenty of grass. Maybe he wants us to know it was springtime or summertime and the grass was growing. But if we put this into context of Jesus is a good shepherd, a good shepherd knows where, where to get people to sit down, where they can be calm, where they can be comfortable, and not have to worry. And he had them out there. I just wonder why John put that there. I'm glad he did. Good shepherd, the good shepherd has a ministry like no other does. He has a ministry like no other does. As you read through, through the Gospels, do, do you see anybody that has a ministry like Jesus did? Man, he'll just show up and people come, whether they hated him or loved him. They'd show up and they'd come and they want to hear his words. The good shepherd, he had a ministry like no other. Because he had a mindset like no other. And he had a mission like no other. So that's our next point to look at. He had a mission like no other. Jesus' mission was this, to die for the sheep. That was his mission. Amen. How do you separate ministry and ministry? Mission and ministry. Ministry is kind of what, what you're doing, but mission is why you're doing it. What you're there for. What's your part in it? What's my part in it? Jesus' part was to come and to die for his sheep. He had to minister to the sheep. He had to take care of the sheep to demonstrate who he was and then die for him. And he knew that from the beginning, didn't he? We see two kinds of die. We see how Jesus kind of died daily because he, he tells him, I don't have anything. Birds of the air have nests and foxes have dens. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. We see a ministry of laying down daily his life. Or maybe we can say it like this, like Pastor Greg has taught. We pick up our cross daily and follow Jesus. Jesus was dying to himself, to his self-desires, to everything but the will of the Father. That's what he came to do, the will of the Father. And that will of the Father was for him to die for the sheep. The good shepherd had a timeline that he was living on. There were certain ways and certain times that were said and it would not be altered. And no man was going to take his life. But he was going to willingly set it aside. For the plan of the Father was to set his life aside. That he may take it up again. This is his mission. Love will keep us doing ministry with the right mindset. And fulfill our mission. Even when. Even when. We have the authority to quit. Sometimes we may want to quit. Sometimes Jesus may have wanted to quit. Look at verse 17. Therefore, or excuse me, yeah, verse 17. Therefore, doth my Father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No man lay it down, but I lay it down myself and I have the power to take it up again. And I have the power to... Excuse me, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up. This commandment I received from the Father. That if he had the power to lay his life down, he had the power to take it up again. But yet he fulfilled this ministry. His mission. He fulfilled it. With the power to lay it down and to take it up. What, what does that mean? He had control. He had control. Remember on the night that the soldier was coming... And, uh, no, I never Look, Jesus, Jesus' own initiative, his own initiative was to lay down his life. 
His own initiative was to lay down his life. And he laid it down himself. He laid it down himself. The good shepherd gave his life up. Jesus had the, has the power of death and life. He received it from the Father and no one else could take it from him. So what it, what's a ministry, a mindset, and a mission? It was the one Jesus lived out, wasn't it? And we see that. And what a life he lived. How could he have loved us like that? And how could he love the sheep so much? And what made him that good shepherd? You go back up to verse 12 and, and look at verse 12. Well, he wasn't a hired hand, was he? He was not a hired hand and not a shepherd. But Jesus, that hireling was not that shepherd, but Jesus was that shepherd, wasn't he? He says, I'm that good shepherd. And by the demonstration, the evidence of his life that we see through the Bible, he cared for people. He cared for the sheep. He supplied for them. He laid down his life, didn't he? Everything, every moment was about the sheep. And who's the, who owned the sheep are not. Well, who's owned the sheep? The hireling was not a shepherd. The hireling was not the owner of the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd. I think we can say Jesus was the owner of the sheep. Well, how can we say Jesus is the owner of the sheep? Well, who does a heavenly father give charge of sheep to? He gives it to a son, don't he? Because the son has the same desires as the father. And the son is going to take care of the sheep just like the father would take care of the sheep. If the father would lay down his life for the sheep, the son would lay it down his life for the sheep. Does that make sense? Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. My father's given me these sheep. I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to take care of them this far. I'm going to lay down my life. As a matter of fact, I'm going to lay it down. Nobody's going to take it from me. By my own initiative, I'm going to lay it down. And by my own initiative, I'm going to pick it back up. This is that great shepherd that we are when we look at it in here. He was not a hireling. But he was a true shepherd. That hireling was not a shepherd. That hireling was not a son. But the son, all the inheritance of the father is given to the, to the one and only son. That son with the same desires as the father. So as we finish up, as the owner has the greatest interest in the sheep, he has the greatest interest and concern for their well-being, for their care. And he gave, that, he gave that care to his one and only son. That came. And bled and died for us. But Jesus is telling those, the, the Pharisees and scribes. I'm the good shepherd. Those that were hearing it. He is the good shepherd. So we're going to end with this. The good shepherd. He had a ministry. He fulfilled this ministry. Because he had the right mindset. And he, he fulfilled his ministry with the right mindset because he was on mission for the kingdom of God. He was sent to do a mission from God. So as you know, we can pursue the kingdom of God with these responsibilities also. We have a ministry. We got to have a right mindset for that ministry. And each of us has a mission. So these responsibilities are us of the children of God. And we have the desires of the Father in heaven. He saved us. He's given us a ministry of reconciliation. He's told us to make disciples. Therefore, as leaders, we must fulfill our ministry to his people, to his sheep. We must have the mindset to do the ministry and we must complete our mission. That is, be faithful to the end of our days to make disciples. got to give our all to that. So maybe tonight, maybe you don't know how you're supposed to minister, what ministry you're supposed to be in. Or maybe maybe you uh, think your mindset may not be right for ministry. Each of us has a ministry. I'm not talking about just preaching and teaching. I'm talking about a ministry taking care of y'all's sheep. 
Thank every people. Many different ways we can serve. Many different ways we can help people. But we've got to know our ministry. We've got to have the right mindset for that ministry. And we must complete our mission to be faithful to the end. So now as, as Mark comes and he's going to lead us in a, in a song, it's time to make you know, our decision. It's time to... And if we are, there's some of us here, you're doing your mission. You have the right mindset. And you are ministering. Maybe you just need to thank the Lord that he's given you the ability to do it. Maybe there's some of us here that in one of those areas we may be lacking in. We may need a little direction in, a little wisdom in. That would be a good time just to ask God. God, is my ministry right? Is my, mind shut? is my mindset right? Am I on a mission for you? Am I completing my mission that you've given me to do? So I'm going to pray. And then uh, as, as uh, Brother Mark sings make your decision. Please think. Father, we thank you again for this day and this time, this hour that you've given us. And Jesus, as you are the good shepherd, God, you've demonstrated that. We've seen over and over and over through your word. God, you completed your ministry. You served people. You gave people hope gave people life and joy through your truth and through who you are. God, we thank you. And Lord, we know that you, you can set minds right, hearts and desires right. And Lord Jesus, we know that you, we are on a mission for you. God, you, our lives are not our own. But they were bought with a price. Help us to live that mission for your kingdom, for your glory. Amen.